Wake up. It's time to kickstart your day with Scripture Link's Daily Dose of Inspiration. Daily Dose of Inspiration. Good morning and welcome to this brand new day. This is Scripture Link's Daily Dose of Inspiration for Thursday, August 18th, 2022. And as you wake up and you start this brand new day, thank God for this day. Commit this day to Him. Use this day to bring glory and honor to our Lord and use this day to share your faith with someone and encourage somebody. And while you're out and about today, take some time and give God praise because he's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our worship. He is worthy of our thanksgiving. Today is August 18th and it is National Ice Cream Pie Day. Now, I've never heard of ice cream pie. I've heard of ice cream cake. I've heard of cake and ice cream. All of which sound delicious. Never heard of ice cream pie, but pie and an ice cream, it's got to be good too. If you've ever had any, let me know what it is. And if you have some, feel free to bring some over and I'd I'd appreciate it. Our scripture reading today is Psalm chapter 12, verses 6 and 7. And we've been studying in this psalm all week. And it's been a fascinating look here. Um... David starts out this psalm in verse 1 and 2, talking, asking the Lord for help because the godly man has ceased. Uh, there's none in the generation anymore. The faithful have failed from among children of men. And David says they're speaking vanity and with flattering lips with a double heart. And then verses 3 and 4 get in and talk about the message that these former godly people have said or the former faithful people have said and you can see the proud the pride in their voice you can see how they think that they can control everything and then we get into verse number five and we see a contrast here in that that god is getting ready to take action and he says that i will i arise or now will i arise and uh he says, I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. In other words, he will set us in safety, those that are still the godly men, those that are still the godly women, those who are still faithful. God will set us aside and he will protect us from those evil people, from those people that have have went the ways of this world. And now we get into verses 6 and 7. And we get to the good thoughts that we can have. Because remember, the series is titled Good Thoughts for Bad Times. And we've been studying a lot about the bad times. Now we're going to get into the good things, the good thoughts that we can we can have. And look at what he says here in verse 6 and 7. The words of the Lord are pure words. As silver tried in a furnace of earth purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them. From this generation forever. What a contrast we see here when we talk about the words of the Lord and what these former godly people and former faithful people. So, what a big contrast we see there. The words of the Lord are pure words, they're pure, they are perfect, they are not tainted by things. And you know, I made a comment the other week in one of the studies that we were doing that I would rather somebody take one of these modern translations that they understand so that they can grow in their faith. But we have to make sure that these modern translations are true to the Word of God because a lot of these modern translations that's out there today don't include some of the verses we find in in the versions like the King James Version. That's what I preach out of. That's what I teach out of. That's what I believe is the 100% Word of God. And you may differ with that opinion, and that's up to you. But we need to make sure whatever translation we're using lines up with what the Word of God says and doesn't change it for man's own meaning. You see, because if we take God's word and we allow it to be changed for man's own desires, then that no longer is the pure word of God. I've seen and actually looked at, now when I see memes on Facebook or, or pictures on Facebook or Twitter that talk about missing verses 
in these other translations or verses that are changed to a completely different meaning, I'm one to look it up and see exactly what it is they're talking about. And many times the the posters are correct in what what they're showing. That's why we got to make sure the Word of God that we're reading has all the verses in it, has all of God's Word in it. And that's why I preach from and teach from the King James. But anyway, what a contrast we see between these these two, the 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 former faithful or the former godly, are saying, "With our tongue will prevail; with our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us?" They are basically shaking their fist at God and challenging Him, saying, "You you don't have anything over us." But God says His words are pure words. And what uh, what God's words are, think about this now. What God's words are, the words of his children should be. If God's word, or since God's word is pure, then our words ought to be pure. In Psalm chapter 19, it's just a couple of pages over. Psalm chapter 19 and verse 14 David says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Let the words of my mouth be acceptable in your sight. Is that your desire today? Are you desiring that your words are acceptable to God? Then he goes on in verse number 7, talking still about his words. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. We live in a generation today, and this generation that David is is showing us here in the beginning of this psalm is doing everything they can to try and change God's word. God's word doesn't need to be changed for today. There's people that is that is saying that God's word is out of date, that God's word is archaic, and it needs to be brought into modern day stuff. No, modern day stuff needs to be changed to line up to the word of God. That's where the problem relies on. We we read the Word of God. We don't want to agree to it. We want to be able to live our lives the way we want and still make it into heaven. So therefore, people are writing scriptures of their own and changing what God's Word says to meet their needs. And David is, is telling God to keep his words and to preserve his words from this evil generation. And we need to be praying the same thing. We need to be praying that God's word will 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 be preserved from those that are willing and trying to do harm to the word. I never thought in my lifetime that I would see a day where people is trying to change the word of God for their own desires. Maybe when I was younger, I had my head in the sand and I didn't realize what was going on sometimes. But I never thought I'd see the day where people would turn their back on the word of God and start chasing after the things of this world and even creating more evil things than we could ever imagine. But that's where we are today. People that at one time was godly. People that at one time were faithful who now have fallen away. And it's making a whole new religion all for themselves. Shaking their fist at God, saying that you're not good enough. What a sad state to be in. And we need to pray for these people. We need to commit, like I've said every day this week. We need to pray for these people. We need to commit to being the godly men and the godly women that God desires us to be. And we need to pray and we need to ask God to have his words in us that our speech is acceptable to him. And that his words are preserved from this generation. We'll finish up this series tomorrow. But think about that. Commit to being that godly, faithful person that God wants you to be. Think about that as you go through this day. And remember, get into God's word and allow God's word to get into you. And then share that word with someone today. Have a blessed day. Hey, Bob, would you sign this form? Sure. What's it for? Oh, it's just a form saying you won't hold me responsible for anything I've done wrong. What? I'm not signing that. Why are you doing this? Well, when I die, God is going to judge me and all the things I've done wrong. 
but I'm going to show him this form saying that nobody else holds me responsible, so he'll just have to let me into heaven. Uh-huh. What about my car? What about your car? You smashed the fender. Right. That's why you're on the list. Wouldn't it be better if you paid for the damage? Mm, no, it would be better if you signed the form. This isn't going to work. Why not? Well, do you have Jesus' name on your list? Why do I need his name? When you wrong others, you wrong God by breaking his law. In order to be right with God and be allowed into heaven, you need his forgiveness. Hmm, bummer. I was kind of hoping I wouldn't have to admit I've done anything wrong. Yeah. Pride is always the first thing you have to lose when you ask for forgiveness. Another message from Lifeline Productions, the comic strip of radio at lifelinepro.com.